So this is our Kopesh, um, Egyptian sword. Um, now this one here is 85 centimeters, um, which is actually significantly larger than historical Kopeshes, um, or Kopesh, I'm not sure what the plural is. Uh, it's quite interesting because it's actually not that large. Um, so obviously smaller than that, you're talking something just about as big as a machete, really. Um, but um, we're going with 85 again, like with our, our axes. That's the standard size for an offhand weapon in, in a little lab system, so um, it's a good size. Um, it moves quite well. Um, they've often been referred to as axe swords, obviously with this kind of forward projected blade with the curve. Um, it's reminiscent of an axe, uh, but it still is sharp over a longer surface and, and all metal. So they would often um, historically been called or you know, referred to as axe swords. And the cool thing with this one is it very much feels like that. So very forward weighted. Um, you can feel it wanting to move and wanting to jump forwards. Um, and it's just a very interesting sword. Um, when we started playing around with it, um, trying to think through how you would actually use it, um, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with a Kopesh that you couldn't do with another sword. Being if you do, if you do a sorry, <laughs> being if you do a block with the spine um, rather than the edge or the flat, you're actually going to be able to catch an incoming blow, pair it to the outside, and you've actually got your edge on their inside line and are then able to, to strike, um, whilst potentially still um, controlling and, and it, their weapon. More practice with that, we'll um, <laughs> show if it works. Uh, this is our bronze finish one. We've added a few different colours to give it a um, kind of a bit of a patina, uh, like it's aged because obviously it's an old Bronze Age sword. They don't age very well, so I we wanted to give it that kind of antique and, and um, ancient look. Uh, but in general, very forward weighted, very lovely sword, um, visually striking obviously. It's an excellent um, and gorgeous design. Um, historically, one thing to note um, that we found quite interesting as well is the spine was, was there to provide rigidity to bronze, which obviously isn't as, as good as steel. Um, so the spine at the tip was actually still quite thick and the point wasn't actually made for thrusting uh, historically because the spine needed to be there and strong to provide a, a, enough rigidity for the edge to, to stay straight. So um, obviously it depends on your lap system whether thrusts are allowed with different weapons. Um, this one we're still doing with our thrusting tips, but at the end of the day, um, historically they weren't even used for thrusting, so it really is just a close in hooky machete. Cool. I'm going to call our people sorties, forgers. Uh, you don't. I don't know, you just call them hey. <laughs> like, does it? Get out now, like, get out. Yeah. Get out, cunts. Yeah. <laughs> Want a shiv? <laughs> you yeah. like a fancy shiv? Um, yeah. Uh, you're good to start any time, by the oh, way. Oh, good. Yeah. I kind of prefer rather than like, all right, action! It just to be like, look, I'm just yeah. rolling, I'm used to yeah. it, now I'm comfortable with the space if I just go. So, yeah. whatever, you, whatever you like. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Hey everyone, Anthony from Elysian Forge. I'm uh, here today to talk to you about our current swords that are available through our possible um, 